Hi, I'm James. In this video, I'm going to show you an advanced version of the Orton effect. The Orton effect is a technique where you add blur to images, but sharpness is maintained. And for landscape shots, it just really accentuates the atmosphere in the scene and it just takes away the harshness of the sharpness of the image which seems like a bit of a contradiction but it really does work so one of the problems that you get with the Orton effect is that it crushes shadows and if you're working non-destructively with layers and saving your files as TIFFs then the file sizes can be absolutely huge. And I developed this amendment of the technique myself in response to getting a much higher resolution camera where I was really suffering from huge file sizes and also the crushed shadows were a problem. So let's take a look at how this is done. So if you have no layers whatsoever and you just have a background layer, just hit Ctrl and J twice and that's going to make two copies. However, if you have adjustment layers in place, just hold down Ctrl, Shift, Alt and E and that will merge all visible layers to a new layer at the top of the stack as long as the top layer is selected. So I clicked on that just before I did that. And then now we can just hit Ctrl and J to duplicate that layer. And then next up, we just need to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set an amount, usually between 20 and 40 pixels, depending on what you prefer. For this particular shot and the resolution of the camera I shoot with, 30 pixels is my kind of go-to amount. When I had a camera with, I don't know, just over half of the resolution of this one, I would go for an amount of 20. So as I say, it really depends on personal taste and the resolution of your camera, but having a play helps you to find the perfect amount for you. So now we just need to change the blending mode of this layer here from normal to multiply. So there you'll see we've added some transparency, but the shot's really dark. And then click back down onto the first copied layer you created. So here it's called layer two and then change the blending mode to screen. So at this point, you'll immediately see that the shot is much darker than the original. So we can change that. And also you'll see here that the shadows are really, really quite dark and they've been completely crushed. But one thing to remember is that this is the effect at its full strength and you would never use this effect at the full strength because it looks absolutely awful. So to just resolve these issues at this stage, we need to go down to the adjustment layer icon, which is the half white, half black circle at the bottom of the layers panel and select curves. And then just left mouse click on this bottom left point and just drag it up until it says output 25. And you'll see there we've added quite a lot of what looks like haze and it started to make the image look quite washed out. But that's not a problem because as I say, this is the effect at its full strength. But what we've done here is just lifted those shadows so we're not getting all of that detail lost. So what you could do at this point is just lighten the image further if you wish. So it could be a case of just leave it as it is or just bring it up to roughly the original brightness of the shot before these layers were created. So I'm going to go for that there. And it's at this stage where we are going to dramatically reduce the file size. So if I look down here, we'll see that the image is at 477.9 megabytes, which is quite big. So I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, Alt and E. So we're going to merge all visible layers to a new layer at the top of the stack. Then left mouse click on curves, hold down shift, left mouse click on layer two or whatever it's called when you make your copies and drag those three layers that we use to create the effect into the bin. So now the whole effect is held within this single layer here. 
And there, the file size has gone down to 357.2 megabytes. So that's quite a saving just by creating a new layer and deleting the old ones. So all we need to do now is double click on this layer, rename it so we know what it is, and then reduce the opacity. So usually somewhere between 20 and 40% works quite well. I tend to go for around 25 myself. So there you'll see it's just softening things off slightly. But if I just zoom in, we can take a closer look at what is actually going on. So there you'll just see it just takes the kind of harshness off of the light and the detail in the shot, but without actually reducing the sharpness of the detail itself. So that is an advanced method for applying the Orton effect where you can keep file sizes as small as possible and also stop the shadows from being crushed and darkened too much. Mm -hmm.